here's a little something else you can do with volumes. So this here is exactly what we just spent a little bit of time going through. A little bit different. But again, we've got a mesh sphere that's transformed, displaced, put through a volume field, vectored by volume. It's the same setup. It's a much bigger sphere and it's just lying on top of our level, well, our output here, as some volumes. It's a little bit wispy at the moment, which we should be able to completely fix by changing that back to relative and changing this to 0 0.0125. I res relative. And then if we want to, we can move it up a little bit more like that. And then we've just got some very light fog sitting over the top of our links. So the question now is how do we get this into Unreal? Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to up the density of it a little bit. So over here, we're storing fog density. Let's just push that up to four because we can change the density in the shader. We can change the density once we get to Unreal. The big new thing is this node, right open VDB volume. Open VDB is a file format. You can save your volumes out to, and it saves all of your grids. Uh, so that's all of your information, that kind of thing. And all you do is you plug a volume into one end of it. You set up, is it on or off? You set up where you want to save it to. So I've done a couple already. You set up which frame you want it to output on. If you want to output a sequence, you can just plug a time node into that frame and output a sequence. Overwrite, do you want, do you want to overwrite the other one? What properties you want to take out with it? So if I just wanted to say, take my density out, I could take a look at this and say, I just want to take my, there's only three properties on it. so star all of them is probably fine but you could just say i just want to take my voxel fog density out with me and it will come in so this is how you get out of bifrost the big question is how do we get it into unreal and yes this is a really low res super test based volume there has been a plugin released for unreal by edos montreal and edos sherbrooke which is sparse volumetrics using open vdb and nano vdb aero will output to vdb fine we just did it if you have this plugin loaded in unreal you can load those volumes into unreal and the place that you got to do it is instructions for download and install. So download the latest pre-compiled package from releases. If we go to releases, Unreal 5.2, plugin version 0.67. This is the kind of thing that happens. This is, this is the kind of thing it does. You can download it, follow the instructions to install it, and then you'll have it in there. So let's see if it works. I've got it installed. I've got it loaded. So now, really, all you need to do is find on disk where you put your VDB, which I happen to know is here, and just drag it into your content browser. You'll get the import factory. This is where it, it asks you what you want. So this is the grid I have in here. So I only have a voxel fog density grid. It's a float type, fog volume, dimensions, and active voxels. It's not a sequence. I just want to bring one in, or you can bring a whole sequence of files in. And that's basically it. You then import, and this is it here. Successfully, re I obviously already had it in here. So let me just take a look at what my USD stage is doing here. I have a feeling this is scaled up. So what I'm going to do is just drag the cloud in and focus on it. And there it is. That is, it it's, looks tiny. And it's come in Z up, so we need to rotate it on the X. Pretty much as we do in Unreal. So we just need to bring this guy down 90 degrees and we're going to get the same volume that we output. There it is. But it's very, very small because it looks very, very small because this environment is very, very big, basically. So let's just, for the sake of giggles, Scale that right down, grab this guy. Let's just move him to the origin and make sure that's minus 90, not weird. And then we'll just click here and focus on him. There he is. So the environment's still a bit big for the, for the volume, which is okay because we can scale the volume. 10, 10, 10, not big enough. 
100, 100. Now you're getting a much better idea of what it, what it actually looks like and you can move it around in Unreal quite happily. So you can have the mist coming off the hills or sitting on top of the lakes or whatever it is you want to do. But that's how you get volumes into Unreal. Also, when you output to VDB, it's a very, very good way of making a cache for you. So if you've got, and this, this will come more into play when we do simulation and caching. That's in the PowerPoint for, the, for that system, and I'll also talk about it. But when you output an arrow to a VDB, you are essentially caching it to file. You can use bobs, you can use VDBs. VDB is better. Everything reads VDB. For example, Unreal doesn't read a bob file. By, only by Frost, I think, reads bob files right now. Which is fine, that's its internal caching format, so that's all good. But when you write out a sequence of volumes to a VDB, which, like I said, we'll be doing more next week, you're writing that data to disk and you can retrieve it whenever you like without having to regenerate it. So there you go, that's a quick little arrow set up in Bifrost and then mirrored across in Unreal. I've scaled this volume up quite a lot, so it's kind of chunky. Let's sort of see some of the big voxels sitting over here but it's definitely more than enough to give you an idea. You can, because it's just an Unreal asset right now, I can select it up here and I need to go and find the, I believe, material component. Yeah, here's the material that you're working with. So you can do things like switching on and off the emission color, switch on the scattering color, you can push the scattering, so it becomes a lot thicker. This is controlling your density by the look of it here. So if I was to, so you could make that a little less dense or a little more dense, or if you wanted to push it, if you wanted to overcook it, push it over one. That's all cool. You've got an emissive color as well. So if I, this has already been pushed up. So if I say put this up to say eight, you get very bright, but it doesn't have to be white. It can be different kind of color as well. Put that up to there, you're starting to see a sort of a pink tinge to it. But yeah, volumes in Unreal. And that pretty much concludes the exercises and, and ideas around volumes. Just remember, you know, voxels are the basic unit of volumes. Voxels carry information. Uh, they carry them in a grid. Each, each grid tile has four by four by four voxels in it when you're working in Bifrost and you can render them, and you can get them out to Unreal, and you can save them to disk as a cache. And yeah, there's plenty of ways to play with them and make them look really good, everything from modeling to making clouds. So hope that's helped, and uh, have a good one, and I'll see you next week. Cheers.